it right now is story time with Uncle Scotty and I am your host Uncle Scotty we have our own mugs you have your own mugs we all have our own mugs it's a world of own mugness water is delicious hydration is important also important washing our hands we're still washing our hands been doing this a couple months now how fun is that we've been reading for a couple months that's so cool four books we are on our fifth book our fifth book is the fantastic Mr. Fox he and his family are in a bit of a jam right now because these three farmers, Buggis, Bunce, and Bean, are after Mr. Fox because he has been taking their chickens, ducks, geese, or turkeys for dinner every night. And first they tried to shoot Mr. Fox and they got his tail and he's lost his tail now. Second, they tried to dig him out and he had his family dig all the way down into a deep, deep, deep tunnel. So now we're going to see what happens next. Are the foxes safe? Chapter 5, The Terrible Tractors. As the sun rose the next morning, Boggus and Bunce and Bean were still digging. They had dug a hole so deep you could put a house... They had dug a hole so deep that you could have put a house into it. But they had not yet come to the end of the fox's tunnel. They were all very tired and all very cross. Dang, dang. Dang and blast, said Boggus. Whose rotten idea, whose rotten idea was this? Beat, beat, Bean's idea, said Bunce. Boggus and Bunce both stared at Bean. Bean took another swig of cider, then put the flask back into his pocket without offering it to the others. Listen, he said angrily, I want that fox. I'm not going to get that fox. I'm going to get that fox. Listen, he said angrily. I want that fox. I'm going to get that fox. I'm not giving in until I've string him up over my front porch, dead as a dumpling. We can't get him by digging, that's for sure, said the fat Boggus. I've had enough of digging. Bunce, the little pot-bellied dwarf, looked up at Bean and said, have you got any more stupid ideas then? What? said Bean. I can't hear you. Bean never took a bath. He never even washed. As a result, his ear holes were clogged with all kinds of muck and wax and bits of chewing gum and dead flies and stuff like that. Ew. This made him deaf. Speak louder, he said to Bunce, and Bunce shouted back. Got any more stupid ideas? Bunce keeps getting more and more southern in this story. I guess that's where his roots are, and so he digs a lot, and he gets angry. He speaks in a really southern voice. That's what it is. And here we can see Bean's clogged ears. Bunce and Boggus yelling at him. Bean rubbed the back of his neck with a dirty finger. He had a boil coming there, and it itched. Ooh, it's like a bump. He had... What we need on this job, he said is machines, mechanical shovels. We'll have him out in five minutes with mechanical shovels. This is a pretty good idea, the other two had to admit. All right then, Bean said, taking charge. Boggus, you stay here and see that the fox doesn't escape. Bunce and I will go fetch our machinery. If he tries to get out, shoot him quick. The long, thin Bean walked away. The tiny Bunce trotted after him. The fat Boggus stayed where he was with his gun pointing at the foxhole. Soon, two enormous caterpillar tractors with mechanical shovels on their front ends came clanking into the wood. Bean was driving one, Bunce the other. The machines were both black. They were murderous, brutal-looking monsters. And here you can see them. These big caterpillar tractors. Mechanical shovels. Here we go, then! shouted Bean. Death to the fox, shouted Bunce. The machines went to work, biting huge mouthfuls of soil out of the hill. The big tree under which Mr. Fox had dug his hole in the first place was toppled like a matchstick. On all sides, rocks were sent flying and trees falling and the noise was deafening. Down in the tunnel, the foxes crouched, listening to the terrible clanging and banging overhead. What's happening, Dad? 
cried the small foxes. What are they doing? Mr. Fox didn't know what was happening or what they were doing. It's an earthquake, cried Mrs. Fox. Look, said one of the small foxes. Our, our tunnels got shorter. I, I can see daylight. They all looked round, and yes, the mouth of the tunnel was only a few feet away from them now, and in the circle of daylight beyond them, and in the circle of daylight beyond, they could see the huge two black tractors almost on top of them. Tractors, shouted Mr. Fox, and mechanical shovels. Dig for your lives. Dig, 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 dig. Chapter 6, The Race. Now there began a desperate race, the machines against the foxes. In the beginning, the hill looked like this. You know what? I'm going to put it right here. The hill looked like this. After about an hour, as the machines bit away more and more soil from the hilltop, it looked like this. So different. The hill's gone. It's like a valley now, not a hill. The opposite of a hill. The nadir, not the zenith. Ask your parents. Sometimes the foxes would gain a little ground and the clanking noises would grow a little fainter. And Mr. Fox would say, we're going to make it. I'm sure we are. But then a few moments later, the machines would come back at them and the crunch of the mighty shovels would get louder and louder. Once the foxes actually saw the sharp metal edge of one of the shovels as it scraped up the earth just behind them. Keep going, my darlings. Don't give up, panted Mr. Fox. Keep going, keep going. The fat Bogus shouted to Bunsen Bean, We'll get him any moment now. Have you caught sight of him yet? Bean called back. Not yet, shouted Bogus, but I think you're close. I'll pick him up with my bucket, shouted Bunce. I'll chop him to pieces. By lunchtime, the machines were still at it, and so were the poor foxes. The hill now looked like this. The farmers didn't stop for lunch. They were too keen to finish the job. Hey there, Mr. Fox, yelled Bunce, leaning out of his tractor. We're coming to get you now. You've had your last chicken, yelled Bogus. You'll never come prowling around my farm again. Farm again? It's like Farmageddon. It's like the end of the farm. Hashtag puns. A sort of madness had taken hold of the three men. The tall, skinny bean and the dwarfish, pot-bellied bunts were driving their machines like maniacs, racing the motors and making the shovels dig at a terrific speed. The fat bogus was hopping around like a dervish and shouting, Faster, faster, faster! By five o'clock in the afternoon, this is what happened to the hill. The hole the machines had dug was like the crater of a volcano. It was such an extraordinary sight that crowds of people came rushing out from the surrounding villages to have a look. They stood on the edge of the crater and stared down at Bogus and Bunce and Bean. Hey there, Bogus. What's going on? We're after a fox. You must be mad. The people jeered and laughed, but this only made the three farmers more furious and more obstinate. What a great word, obstinate. I think obstinate is like stubborn, obstinate. I believe that's what it means. More furious and more obstinate and more determined than ever not to give up until they caught the fox. Stubborn, stubborn, pig-headed? I think so. And more determined ever to not give up until they caught the fox. And here you can see a picture of all the people looking down at what used to be the hill. We'll find out what happens next. Next time on Storytime with Uncle Scotty, I have been your host. Why did I take my glasses off? I can't see anything now. That's okay. Here it is. Hey. Queer Bone Monks, thank you for watching, checking us out, subscribing, liking, all those things. Make me so happy, and I will see you next time. Bye.